Welcome to this tutorial on using Amuse, our powerful stable diffusion software. Today I'll be walking you through a key feature, advanced mode text to image image generation, and for this video I'll be using the Flux.1 Schnell model. Text to image image generation is fairly straightforward and one of the easier ways to generate images with stable diffusion, and is the method of image generation most people will already be familiar with. In Stable Diffusion, a prompt is a textual description provided by the user that guides the AI model in generating images. The prompt acts as the main source of instruction telling the model what kind of image to create, and the model interprets the words in the prompt and uses them to steer the diffusion process from random noise into a meaningful and coherent visual output. A scheduler manages how noise is added or removed during the image generation process plays a key role in controlling the diffusion and denoising steps, affecting the trajectory of how an image evolves from pure noise into a recognizable picture based on the input prompt. There are many different schedulers. Here, with the Flux.1 Schnell model, our options are Flow Match Euler Discrete and Flow Flash Flow Match Euler Discrete. The names of these schedulers won't mean much to a layman, but you can switch between the different schedulers to experiment to see how they will change the resulting images. A seed is a numerical value that initializes the random number generator responsible for creating the starting noise in the diffusion process. This noise is what the model will gradually define into a coherent image based on the input prompt. The seed ensures reproducibility and variability in the image generation process. Inference steps refer to the number of iterations or stages the model goes through to transform random noise into a coherent image based on the input prompt. Each inference step gradually refines the noisy image, progressively making it more resemble the desired output. These steps are an essential part of the denoising process, which is the reverse of the diffusion process where noise was added to the image. Guidance scale, sometimes referred to as CFG scale, short for classifier free guidance, controls the strength of how much the generated image should align with the text prompt. It is a parameter that helps guide the diffusion process towards more relevant outputs based on the provided prompt. A low guidance scale gives the model more creative freedom so the output might not stick as closely to the text prompt, resulting in images that may have more diversity, but also may be less accurate or relevant to the prompt. Whereas a high guidance scale causes the model to strongly adhere to the prompt, producing images that align closely with the description. However, if the scale is set too high, it can cause artifacts or lead to images that are less natural looking as the model is overly constrained by the prompt. Guidance scale is essentially a balance between diversity or creativity and fidelity or prompt accuracy. Guidance scale isn't enabled for the model, uh, for this model, so we don't really need to worry about it today, but it is a parameter you can tweak for other models. A beta schedule defines the, how the noise level changes over the course of the diffusion process. The beta parameter controls the variance or the amount of noise added at each step during the forward diffusion process, where noise is progressively added to an image. The schedule refers to how this beta value evolves across the diffusion steps, influencing the model's ability to generate high quality images during the reverse denoising process. Like the scheduler, the names of these beta schedules won't mean much to a layman, but you can switch between the different beta schedules to experiment and see how they change the resulting images. Karas Sigmas refers to a particular noise scheduling technique used in stable diffusion specifically in samplers that guide the diffusion process. It is a, it's based on research by Tero Karras and others known for their work in advancing generative models. The Karras Sigma schedule is designed to improve the noise distribution over the steps, enhancing the quality of the generated images and making the sampling process more efficient. This is another toggle you can experiment with to see how it changes the resulting images. Live update is a very cool feature, but not one that I feel is very well, very relevant to the text image generation, as it will lead to images being generated before you're finished writing your prompt. And it's much better demonstrated in an image generation mode such as paint to image, and so I'll demonstrate this functionality in another video. You'll probably never need to tweak any of the options in the advanced tab, but they are there to tweak, experiment with, or change as you wish if needed. In Amuse, there are a number of example prompts here by default that you can use to test if you can't think of anything off the bat to play with. So I'm going to click generate. It's going to load the pipeline and then start generating the, generating the image. And 
And just like that, we're away generating images using a muse text image in advanced mode. If we like this image, we can keep the seed the same. As I said, the seed is used in the random number generator. And so, in basically, it will always generate the same image. If I generate, I will get this image exactly. However, if I tweak something, like increase the number of steps, then I'll get a slightly different image. Uh, but if I leave everything the same, use the same seed and generate, I'll get the exact same image. If I'm not happy with the image, I can change the seed to something completely different, and then I'll get a completely different image. If I want to tweak the image in some way, I can keep the same seed and try changing the seed of the prompt slightly differently. So I've gotten the exact same image. Now in Amuse, not only are there some default prompts, but there are also some snippets. So for example, I can use the same prompt, but it's now going to also try and make it have intricate design details, hyperrealism, photorealism, and whatnot. And so if I generate again, I should now get a different image but not too far from the original image, so I'm using the same seed and a very similar prompt. If I don't want to pick a random seed each time, I can change the seed to zero, and that'll just give me a random seed each time. If I want to save my image, it's as simple as clicking save and then choosing where I want to save it on my hard drive. Most of these buttons uh, won't be relevant for this video in particular as they're basically it'll copy these details here and send it to the appropriate tab. So if I wasn't already in the text generation, uh, the text image generation page, clicking this would take these details and move them here, just like clicking this button would move it to the image to image generation, the paint to image generation, and, and so on. These are features I'll be going over in another video. I can also, if I want to go back and look at any of the images I had previously, I can go to the history view and I'll find them here. And so to demonstrate basically what these buttons would do if I want to bring this back up get this image again basically click the text to image button and it will copy those details the seed and the, the scheduler and the steps etc it will copy these over here and so now if I click generate I should get this image generated again So we can see it's generated that same image again. Now, if I wanted to generate multiple images at once, I can go to the automation tab. One of the simplest ways is just to do it with a random seed each time, but there are different options. If I want to try the same prompt and the same seed, but with different number of steps, I could do that. Same with guidance, scheduler, conditioning, sale, etc. Seeds is the simplest one. So I'm gonna pick three images I'm going to ask it to automate that and I should get three different images with the same seed but uh, with, sorry with the same prompt but with different seeds and it'll generate three images back to back
so that's the first image. That's the second image. the third image. Now, one last thing I'll show you before I go, which can be just fascinating to watch, is if you don't give it a prompt at all and just give it a random seed, then it will just take essentially random noise and try to figure out what that noise looks like. It's essentially like the model looking at clouds and going, that one looks like a lion, or that one looks like a cat, or that one looks like a tree. It's, it's just going to spit out purely random results. You have no idea what you're going to get. And it can just be absolutely fascinating to watch to see what comes out of the noise. And so if I go to automation, I can say I just want to get 10 random images and tell it to go. It's just going to essentially pick random numbers, create purely random noise from that image, and then try and figure out what that noise looks like, and it could be literally anything. So with that, hopefully I've left you with everything you need to know to start producing basic text to image images with uh, Amuse. And uh, in the next videos, I'll be covering some of these other features. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.